Hey students, Mr. Soap here. I teach second and third grade here in Seattle. So this week we are going to continue determining important ideas. You're going to practice visualizing to understand and enjoy a story, and you're going to be giving reasons to be supporting your thinking. Today, you're gonna hear and talk about a story. Tomorrow, you're going to hear the same story again, and we're going to talk about the important ideas in it. Throughout the read aloud, I'm going to ask you to turn to your partner or to do a turn and talk. This could be with anybody that is around you. If you're watching this read aloud by yourself, it's okay to pause the video and to practice your thinking out loud. Today, we are going to be reading Me First, written by Helen Lester and illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. Now, what do you think this story might be about? Turn to your partner. Now that you had a chance to share with those around you, I'd like you to give me a thumbs up, a shaky thumb, or a thumbs down. How many of you ever wanted to be first? Go ahead and give Mr. Silk a thumbs up if there were times that you wanted to be first. A shaky thumb if you're not too sure if there was a time that you ever wanted to be first. Or a thumbs down if you've been really patient and you've let others go before you. Now, this story that you are going to be hearing is about a pig named Pinkerton who wants to be first until he is met with an unpleasant surprise. Before we get started with me first, I want you to close your eyes and I would like you to practice visualizing as I read these first few pages. Let's get started with me first. Pinkerton was pink, plump, plump meaning round or chubby, and pushy. He would do anything to be first, even if it meant bouncing off bellies, stepping on snouts, the noses of pigs, or tying tails. Me first, he cried when he had been last in line and finished first down the slide. Me first, he cried at story time, settling on his round bottom with his big head right smack in front of the book. When the author says right smack in front of, that means as close as possible to. So Pinkerton was as close as he could in front of that book. Now we're gonna be doing our first turn and talk. How did you picture Pinkerton in your mind? Turn to your partner. Now that you had a chance to share, I wanna show you what thinking out loud about our reading looks like. I pictured Pinkerton being pink, very big, and very pushy. It seemed like he wanted to do everything first. He went down the slide first. He didn't seem to like to share the book that he was reading. This is how I pictured Pinkerton in my mind. Now that you had a chance to visualize, we're going to go back and reread these first few pages. Let's get started with me first. Pinkerton was pink, plump, and pushy. He would do anything to be first, even if it meant bouncing off bellies, stepping on snouts, or tying tails. Me first, he cried when he had been last in line and finished first down the slide. Me first, he cried at story time, settling on his round bottom with his big head right smack in front of the book. And every day in the school troateria or cafeteria, which is a made up word for the lunchroom, me first rang out and there was Pinkerton. One Saturday, Pinkerton's pig scout troop went on a day trip to the beach. Pinkerton was first on the bus and sat in the front row. He was first off the bus, first in the water, first out of the water, and first into the picnic basket. A picnic basket is used to carry food for a meal outdoors. After lunch, the pig scouts decided to go for a hike. Off they went, Pinkerton leading the line, of course. As the pig scouts marched across the sand, they heard a faint 
meaning not clear, voice in the far distance, meaning far away. The voice called out, who would care for a sandwich? Pinkerton pricked, meaning raised up his pointy ears. Care for a sandwich? Oh yes, me first, he thought, and he began to trot or run slowly ahead of the others. Soon, he heard the voice again, closer and louder this time. Who would care for a sandwich? Me first, cried Pinkerton, kicking up sand and leaving the other pig scouts far behind. His imagination almost burst. Peanut butter, jelly, two tomatoes, seven pickles, a slab of cheese, a blob of mayo, mayo being short for mayonnaise, a big smear, meaning thin layer of mustard, all for me first. Who would care for a sandwich? Now at full gallop, meaning running very fast, Pinkerton shrieked, me first. Over a sandy hill, he flew and plop. He landed face to face with a small creature with a bump on her nose and fur on her toes. Am I glad to see you, she cackled. I sure could hear you coming. Me first, me first, me first. I guess you really would care for a sand witch. Oh yes indeed, replied Pinkerton. He jumped up and down so fast his teeth jiggled, meaning shook. Good, cackled the small creature. Pinkerton waited one second, two seconds, three seconds. Well, he asked. Well, what, replied the small creature. The sandwich, begged Pinkerton. Where's the sandwich? The small creature curtsied. You're looking at her, she went on. I am a sandwich, and I live in the sand, and you said you would care for a sandwich, so here I am, care for me. So this is going to be a first stopping point. I want you to think about what has happened in the story so far. What do you think will happen next? Turn to your partner. Now that you had a chance to share, I want to share some of my thinking out loud. Pinkerton likes to be first. They wanna, they went on a trip and they got, tr and it seems like Pinkerton got tricked by a sandwich who he actually thought was like the food sandwich. I think what's going to happen next is that Pinkerton is going to learn a lesson from the sandwich. All Pinkerton could say was, but I, taking no notice, meaning that he wasn't paying attention, the sandwich continued, you said, me first. You wanted to be the first to care for me. Well, congratulations. Now, just come along to my sandcastle. Grabbing Pinkerton firmly by the sleeve, she led him around a few bends, meaning a few turns on a road or path. Before he could say, but I, again, the gate to her castle closed. All right, my pink, plump, and pushy one, now you care for me. You may have the honor of being the first to powder my nose and comb my toes. Seeing no way out, Pinkerton powdered her nose and combed her toes. Rubbing her tummy, the sandwich spoke on. Finally, after you had the privilege of being the first to wash my dishes and sweep my castle and do my laundry and curl my hair and tuck me in, meaning put me to bed, you may be the first to tell me a bedtime story. Pinkerton washed the dishes, swept the castle, did the laundry, curled the sandwich's hair and tucked her in. Now, we're going to stop here and do another turn and talk. I want you to think about your response before sharing with your partner. Now, what has happened in the story so far? 
What do you think is going to happen next? Turn to your partner. Now that you had a chance to share, I want to share my thinking out loud. Pinkerton didn't get that sandwich that he wanted. Instead, he ran into a sandwich instead of an actual sandwich, and he started doing a lot of chores for her, such as her laundry, her hair, and even tucked her in the bed. What I think is going to happen next is that Pinkerton isn't going to like doing all of these chores for the sandwich so he's going to try and find a way out let's see what happens next and i want you to see if your prediction comes true as well the sandwich stretched and yawned loudly now the story i need my story pinkerton was so tired he could barely speak i don't know any stories he whimpered then how about making up something? Oh, how about something concerning? Concerning meaning about a pushy pig who always wanted to be first. Pinkerton sighed and began. Once upon a time, there lived a pig who always wanted to be first until one day he met a wise sandwich. Wise and beautiful, cut in the sandwich. A wise and beautiful sandwich who showed him that first was not always best. Aha, cackled the sandwich. She gave Pinkerton a slow, serious, and meaningful wink. Have you learned something? Oh, yes, 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 said Pinkerton. I promise I have. In that case, thanks for the care. Goodbye and good luck. She opened the gate and Pinkerton sped off so fast he didn't even notice the delicious sandwich she held out to him. He was just in time to catch the bus. Oh, he scooted. Pink, plump, and glad to be last. So, let's talk about what we just read. I want you to practice retelling some parts of Pinkerton, and I want to remind you that I want you to have some reasons for your thinking as well. So my first question is this, what happens in the story? Now, from what I remember of what happened in the story is that Pinkerton always wanted to be first. In the beginning of the story, he was first in the lunch line, going down the slides, and even when it came to reading, he was first then. His class decided to take a field trip to the beach where Pinkerton thought that he was going to get a sandwich, but instead he ran into an, uh, a sandwich that was a witch and was tricked into doing chores. But he ended up learning that it was okay to not always be first. And at the end of the book, he was okay with being last of going onto the bus. Now, my second question is this for you. Would you want to be friends with Pinkerton? Why or why not? I'm thinking about it. I would want to be friends with Pinkerton because at the end of the book, he learned that it was okay to not always be first. And when they were all going back on the bus, he was okay with being last. That is why I would be friends with Pinkerton. So after our read aloud, we are going to move on to vocabulary. The first word that we are going to be learning is the word blob. Now, a blob is a small lump or a drop of something that is soft and wet. I'm going to reread a few pages from the book of Me First, and I want you to keep an eye out and listen very closely for the word blob. Soon, he heard the voice again, closer and louder this time. Who would care for a sandwich? Me first, cried Pinkerton, kicking up sand and leaving the other pig scouts far behind. 
his imagination almost burst. Peanut butter, jelly, two tomatoes, seven pickles, a slab of cheese, a blob of mayo, a big smear of mustard, all for me first. Who would care for a sandwich? Blob is the first word we will learn today. Remember, a blob is a small lump or drop of something that is wet. In the picture on page 13, Pinkerton is imagining a sandwich with a blob or a, or a sandwich with a lump of mayonnaise on it. Now, look at the word blob in this part of the video. Now, say the word blob. So, today, to help you learn this word blob, I want you to use this sentence prompt today to help you discuss today's words. Now, take a look at the word blob up top. Remember, a blob is a small lump or a drop of something that is soft and wet. If you take a look at the picture that I have, it is a blob of paint. Now, think about this question. What do you notice about this blob? What does it look like? How big is it? Turn to your partner. For students that need some extra help, I want you to use this sentence starter or sentence prompt. I noticed that the blob is blank. I want you to use this to help you understand how to use the word blob. Now, let me share what I noticed about this blob. It is red, it is a small lump, and it looks like it is wet paint. I noticed that this blob is small, it is wet, it is red, and it looks like a blob or a drop of something that is wet. Now I want you to think about this question. You will also use the prompt or sentence starter down below to help you use this word. What would a blob of jelly look like? Turn to your partner. Remember, if you need some extra help, use this prompt down below. A blob of jelly would look like blank. Now that you had a chance to share with your partner, I'm going to share my example. A blob of jelly would look like a small lump of purple. It is soft. It also looks like it is wiggly and it is wet as well. It is a small drop or a lump. Point to today's word of blob at the top. Say the word blob. And remember that a blob is a small lump or a drop of something that is soft and wet. So for our next word that we are going to learn for vocabulary is the word shriek. Now, the word shriek means scream or cry out loudly. To help us learn more about the word shriek, we are going to reread some of the pages in Me First. I want you to listen very closely for the words me first so that you can understand how to use the word shriek. Now, at full gallop, Pinkerton shrieked, me first! Over a sandy hill, he flew and kaplop! He landed face to face with a small creature with a bump on her nose and fur on her toes. Am I glad to see you, she cackled. I sure could hear you coming. Me first, me first, me first. I guess you really would care for a sandwich. Now, shriek and scream are synonyms. 
Synonyms are words that mean the same thing or almost the same thing. In the story, Pinkerton shrieks, me first, because he is excited and wants to be the first pig to get a sandwich. Now, it is your turn to point to the word shriek. Now, I want you to say the word shriek. To help you understand the word shriek, people sometimes shriek or scream when they are frightened or surprised or happy and excited. Sometimes you hear children shriek on the playground because they are excited and having fun. We are going to use think, pair, and share to answer this next question to help you learn the word shriek. Remember to use think, pair, and share to answer this question. When have you or someone you know shrieked? Why did you or that person shriek? Turn to your partner. Now, if you're having a little trouble, that's okay. I want you to use the sentence starter or the sentence prompt down below to help you answer that question. To help you get started, I shrieked when I blank because blank. Remember to share with your partner. Now that you had a chance to share with your partner, let me share my example. I shrieked when it was my birthday because I got a new bike to ride. Let's try another question to help you understand the word shriek. You are also going to turn to your partner after this question, so I want you to think and listen very carefully. When have you screamed or cried out because you were happy or excited, surprised or frightened? When have you heard someone shriek or cry out because the person was happy or excited, surprised or frightened? Turn to your partner. Remember, if you need help, I want you to use the sentence starter or sentence prompt to help you. I shrieked when I blank because I Now that you had a chance to share with your partner, let me share my example. I saw my students shriek when they were surprised at school with cupcakes because it was one of my students' birthday. Remember, the word that we are learning is shriek. Point to the word shriek. Remember, it means to scream or cry out loudly. Our words today are shriek and blob. During IDR today, I would like you to read for at least a total of 20 minutes. You can read fiction or nonfiction text. As you read, you should think about what you think is something the author really wants you to remember. Then you should complete the Determining Important Ideas page for Monday in your packet. When you are done, you should talk about your book with someone and share your work. To help you get started and to show you an example, I am going to be using our book of Me First to help me finish the Determining Important Ideas page for Monday in your packet. Now, you can see Mr. Soap's completed work in this video. I put the title and the author's name for our first question because it's asking what is the title of the book and the author's name. I put Me First by Helen Lester. In our second question, what is the topic of the text that you read? I wrote, it is a fiction narrative about a pig named Pinkerton who wants to be first. Now, your third and another really important question, because we've been working on determining important ideas, is what is an idea the author really wants you to remember? I wrote down on my page, the author wants me to remember that you do not always have to be first and that you can be kind by letting others go first. I think that is the important idea that the author really wants me to remember. 
When you're done, I want you to share the title of the text and the author's name and the topic of the text and an idea that you think that the author really wants the reader to remember with someone around you. Remember to explain your thinking and to give reasons. And remember, you can do this with a fiction book or a nonfiction book. Thanks for watching, everybody.